As of version 1.7, RPG developer Barkin has improved support for Vroid-based characters, but a lot of video tutorials were made before that update. Additionally, a lot of information is scattered all over the place, which isn't great for beginners. So today I wanted to document a clean-cut walkthrough of importing VRM characters into your RPG developer Bacon project. By the end of this video, you should have a fully functional model in the game without having to arduously assign materials. Additionally, you'll also update your model to be able to equip items in either hand and set up the physics of the character, including jiggle physics. Don't worry, we'll get to that later. With that out of the way, pay attention and let's begin. Now, full disclosure, a lot of the information in this tutorial was based off the official Back in Wiki's own VRM tutorial, to which I've linked in the video description. First off, you'll need to have Vroid Studio installed to create and export your VRM models, and Blender to edit and export your model into an FBX. You'll also need to download the VRM add-on for Blender. If you already have it installed, I'd strongly recommend you reinstall it. The texture extraction feature was broken up until a month ago, and it's a crucial element in getting the textures to work. So, first off, you'll need to re-export your model from Vroid Studio into a new VRM file. Click on the arrow icon in the top right and select Export as VRM. Bacon only supports two materials per model, so you'll need to go into Reduce Materials and under the Materials drop-down, select Two. This will take a short while, but then you're good to export the model as per usual. Now exit Vroid Studio and open Blender. In the default scene, press A to select all the objects and then press Delete. Now, import your VRM model by going into File, Import and then VRM. Make sure that you tick the box on the right that reads Extract texture images into the folder before confirming. This will create a new folder in the directory of your model with all the VRM's textures extracted. Your VRM model should now appear in the scene. There's some quick Blender skeleton work that we need to do first so that your character can hold items. It's optional, but I'd highly recommend that you follow through. But feel free to skip to the next chapter if you're not interested. Blender can be daunting, so I'll try to explain the process of adding these bones. Left click the skeleton. This should highlight the skeleton only and the name of the selected object on the right should be called Armature. Press Tab to enter edit mode. Before anything else, enable the X-axis symmetry. You should find the button right here. Now, select the hand bone with left click. Hold Shift and press S to open the snap menu and select cursor to selected. Now hold Shift and press A to add a new bone now select the bone and open the Bone Properties panel on the right. Change the name of the bone to either L underscore item hook or R underscore item hook, depending on the hand bone you've initially selected. Just make sure your item hook starts with the same letter as the other bones. Now do the same procedure for the other hand. Left click to select the other hand bone, press Shift S and select Snap to Selected, then press Shift-A to create a new bone, this time for the other hand. Rename the bone with the opposite name of the other item hook bone. If you've done everything correctly, then the bones should move, rotate and scale symmetrically. For this next step, untick the X-axis symmetry button. We just need to parent the bones to each hand, which can be done by first selecting the item hook bone. Then hold shift and left click the hand bone. Right click and go into parent, then make, and lastly, keep offset. Repeat the process for the other hand and you've successfully added your item hooks. 
If you enter pose mode and rotate the hand bones, the item hooks should also rotate accordingly. But they're not correctly placed. In this position, holding a sign would simply plant it upright onto your hand's dorsal. Not ideal, let's get that fixed. Before you do anything else, remember to tick back on the x-axis symmetry. For visual clarity, let's first press S to scale and drag your mouse so that it's just about the size of the hand, then left click to confirm. Now press G to start translating the object in space and then press Z to lock the translation into the z-axis. Place the bone somewhere in the middle of the hand and left click to confirm. Now press R to start a rotation and then press X to lock it on the x-axis. Have the thin part of the bone look in the same direction as the head and left click. Before you click anywhere else, click on the small collapsed menu named Rotate and click on the angle number and input 90 for a clean angle. Feel free to fine tune the position to your liking, but that should basically be it for item hooks. And don't forget to save your project. With our model ready, let's export it into an FBX. First, go into File, then Export, and then FBX. Find the .textures folder that just got created and enter it. Now give the file a unique name. On the right menu, first, adjust the scale from 1.0 to 0.01. Under the Geometry section, deselect Apply Modifiers and select Tangent Space. Lastly, under the armature section, deselect Add Leaf Bones. With all that done, export the model. And we're done with Blender. Your textures folder should now have an FBX model and a slew of textures. But we're missing one crucial file. And that file is located on the Bacon Wiki. Visit the Wiki page linked in the video description and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. You'll need to download the file named FileVRM Material Settings DF. Place the file into the folder which contains both your textures and exported model and make sure to rename the file with the same name as your model's file name. Now open your RPG Developer Bacon project and open the Resources menu. Open the 3D Stamps folder and click Add. Under Local Files, find the folder that houses your exported model and import. If this isn't your first model, Bacon will ask you what to do with the materials. Always choose Add All as New Materials to avoid conflicts. If you did everything correctly, the model will appear fully textured. That's pretty cool, but we have a few more things to do first. Click on Motion, then go into the Resources tab and choose the model you've just imported. Now do the exact same step, but for Blend Shapes. Now turn on Accurate Collider. If you wish to make your own collider, you'd do the same thing you did with Motion and Blend Shapes, but that's a more advanced tutorial. So instead, I'll send you over to the Steam Workshop page of my VRM Physics preset. The preset has a capsule control shape for colliding with walls and NPCs properly and adds jiggle physics for female characters, all assigned to the correct VRM bones. To install the preset, apply all changes, save your current project and then exit Bacon. Visit the Workshop page and press the subscribe button then wait for the download to finish. Open up Bacon, and before opening your project, select Steam Workshop. Select the VRM Physics preset, and then press Rename and Save Project. Save it anywhere on your PC, and then reopen your project and return to the Resources menu. Go into the Physics folder, then press Add Local Files, and find the file in the folder you've just saved in. A new window will appear, just select the item and click Add. 
Now return to 3D Stamps, find the model you've made and click on the Accurate Collider. Now simply choose the VRM Physics preset. The last thing we need to do is to add animations, so let's take a detour to the Mixamo website. You will need an account to access, but it is free. Upload your FBX character to the website and wait for it to process. Now feel free to pick any animation you'd want. Ideally, you'll need at the very least an idle animation, a walk cycle and a run cycle. When you find an animation you like, upon clicking download, you'll need to change the field skin to without skin and bump up the frames per second to 60. When it comes to walk and run, make sure to enable in place before exporting. You should have several different FBX files for each motion. Return to Bacon, go into Resources, Open Motions and then find your model there. On the right panel, select the T-Pose animation and delete it. Then press Add Motion, select all your FBX files in Local Files and Import. Make sure to enable loop for the animations and rename their motion names. Bacon has a list of motion names that are automatically used by the engine for walking, jumping, running and more. And you can check the wiki page in the description for a list of names. But for our example here, we'll name the idle animation as wait. Then the walk animation as walk and the run animation as run. Drag the weight animation to the top of the list and you're done. Put the model as your player model and it should correctly idle, walk and run. And that's the overall procedure on importing a VRM into RPG developer Bacon from start to finish. However, there's a few things to note. Let's call this the troubleshooting section. You might notice that the eyelids aren't rendering quite right when the camera isn't up close. To fix this, go into the face material and scroll all the way down to the cutoff threshold parameter in the Toon Shader settings. Lower the value from 0.9 to something like 0.6. If you want to unify any changes to your models when importing, make sure to update the values in the DEF file and use that updated DEF as a baseline for other imports. Some outfits will emit an ugly transparent white effect, especially on dresses. You can fix this by going into the Game Definition menu and changing the colour listed under Display Colour for Hidden Objects from white to black. If you enabled the Camera Distance Auto Adjustment settings for a third-person game, you might notice that the camera can x-ray your character. You can make it dither instead by going into the materials of the character and in the basic category enable Use Object Transparency. Make sure the feature is enabled in the game definition. I think that's everything there was to talk about. Was there anything else? Hmm. Oh right, I forgot to talk about the blend shapes. In the blend shapes of your model, create a first shape called Default. Add a key and select Add All Keys. This will be your way to fully reset a character's facial expression in code. Next, create a blend shape called Talk. Assign any keys you want to recreate the shape of an open mouth by adding the keys and assigning a value from 0 to 1. This blend shape will automatically be used in the conversation event when this model is talking. Lastly, create a blend shape called Blink, this time with the eyes closed. In the conversation event, this will automatically blink the model. However, this has no effect on the field. You'll have to make a custom event for that. And that's everything I wanted to say about VRMs and Barkin. Let me know if you found this video interesting.
I'm currently working on an RPG in Bacon, inspired by the Yakuza series, but more based off the RPG games, so the Like a Dragon games. So, uh, Like a Dragon? Like? There aren't any plans for future videos, but I could end up doing tutorials here or there. Or maybe devlogs, maybe reviews on paid add-ons for bacon or some Vroid related stuff. However, I'll stress that my main priority is the development of the game, not content creation. If you wish to follow me for more frequent updates, I have an X account at Ingenoir P. You can also ping me on Discord at Ingenoir, but I, I'm not active in any communities at the moment and I, I don't want to act as tech support. I don't have anything left to say, so thanks for watching. Oh, uh, just noticed this at the last minute. I guess I did forget about holding items. Just make an event of the type Attach Model to Cast, hidden in the player category. Then just pick the Attach Selected model and pick either hand. Okay, bye, and thanks Yvonne for the channel. I'll cherish it well.